Yeah, so today we're going to be talking, looking at a few characteristics of the invertebrates in the animal kingdom. But let's look at a few characteristics of the animal kingdom, kingdom animalia as a whole, before we get into our invertebrates specifically. So first of all, uh, animals are going to be heterotrophic, which means they get their energy from something else. Um, they're not going to undergo photosynthesis, they're not going to decompose things. Um, they are multicellular, meaning they are made of more than one cell. Um, there's about 35 different phyla in the animal kingdom, but we're going to break it down into nine main ones that we'll talk about today. And uh, most are going to reproduce sexually, so there's very little asexual reproduction in the animal kingdom. All right, so what are these nine main phyla? Ooh. Um, first we have periphera, which are going to be our sponges. Um, then we go down to nidaria, um, platyhelminths, which are flatworms, nematoda, which are nematodes, are roundworms, annelids, um, things like our le uh, leeches, um, mollusca, which are mollusks, arthropoda, um, echinoderms, and chordata. All right, so we're in this last category, this phylum chordata, with all the chordates. Um, everything else, though, is going to be our invertebrates, so that's what we're going to be looking at today. So before we get into the details of all of our invertebrate phyla, um, I want to talk a little bit about symmetry because it's going to be used to describe different organisms. Now, first we have um, bilateral, bilateral symmetry, which is kind of what we are. Now, with bilateral symmetry, um, it just means that an object or organism can, with bilateral symmetry can be um, divided into uh, equal halves. Um, or two matching halves, but at only one point. Um, on the other side, we have radial symmetry, where an object, object or organism um, can be divided into equal halves uh, through its center at several different points, kind of like this. I guess this is a pizza or an orange, I don't know. And then we have things that are asymmetrical or don't have any symmetry, like this sad little sponge over here. Okay, so let's start with our Periphera, the sponges. So sadly, they are asymmetrical. They are sessile, which means they are living but attached to something and do not move. Um, they feed by filtering water. They have both sexual and asexual reproduction, and there are over 5,000 species of sponges. Who knew? All right, next, moving on to the Nidarians. Now, these guys are kind of cool. These include the Hydra and the jellyfish. Um, you know, like jellyfish, like finding Nemo. And they have radial symmetry, which means we can draw several lines through the center and get equal parts. Um, they're marine, they live in the ocean water. Um, and they have gastrovascular cavities, which I spelled wrong here, um, as well as food vacuoles to help digest, because there's not a lot to these guys. Um, they have both asexual and sexual reproduction. They have little buds, like the hydra can bud off of itself and reproduce asexually that way. It's kind of cool. Um, and they're one of the oldest phyla again. So these guys are a little bit less evolved than some of the others we'll be looking at. All right, next we have the platyhelminths. Can everybody see? Beautiful. Okay, these include our flatworms, like this beautiful planera right here. He's so sad. Um, these guys have bilateral symmetry, so I could actually draw a line. Well technically, through him, and he would have equal halves on either side. Um, they have three layers of tissues. So um, they have an ectoderm, an endoderm, and a mesoderm, not in that order, and they also have a gastrovascular cavity. And they live nearly everywhere, so you see these guys all over the place. All right, let's keep going. So let's talk about some nematoda. Now remember, these were um, several of our examples when we looked at our invertebrate parasites in class the other day. Um, but they do include all of the roundworms. Now these guys have bilateral symmetry, semi <laughs> symmetry so you can just cut them in half. Um, they have complete digestion, so it goes all the way from the mouth to the anus, um, which is a first in evolutionary history here. And they have a very simple nervous system. They generally can range from about 0.3 millimeters, I need to make that look better, to 8 meters. So they can get really long and thick. All right, next guys on the list are annelids or annelida. These are our segmented worms. Now these include um, earthworms and leeches. See this leech, like blood dropping down. Um, they have bilateral, bilateral symmetry. Oh my gosh, can't say that word tonight. Um, and complete digestion as well. They have gas exchange generally through the skin and some can be hermaphroditic, though they also have sexual reproduction. Moving on to our mollusks, mollusca. So these include our squid, octopuses, slugs, clams, and snails. We can see my badly drawn octopus with my badly drawn snail. Um, now these guys also have bilateral symmetry. Um, they have various ways 
they've evolved various ways to eat. Um, they have a specialized rough tongue, they have, some have beaks, and some have gills that they can eat with. They also um, can do respiration through their gills. They have sexual reproduction, and most of these guys are going to be cephalopods. Now remember when we looked at cephalopods, these guys include um, octopuses, squids, and um, uh, cuttlefish, and they're really good at camouflaging. Um, so the large group of them is going to be in cephalopods. All right, moving on to our insects, arthropoda. You see? Okay. Um, these guys include our insects, our crustaceans, and our arachnids. So it's a really large group. Oh, can you see me? No. So it's a really large group. Um, badly drawn bug up here. Also bilateral, bilateral symmetry. Um, symmetry. Phew. They have jointed appendages attached to their head, adom not well, the head really, but their abdomen and um, their thorax. So they have this segmented body structure going on. A lot of them have an exoskeleton made of chitin, um, specialized material. Um, they have sexual reproduction where they lay eggs. Now, some of them have the ability to shed their exoskeleton during certain parts of their life, and some of them also have poison contained in their abdomen. All right. One more group to go. All right, now we have our echinodermata. Now these include our sea stars, or starfish as you may call them, and our sea urchins. Now when these are adults, they're gonna have radial symmetry, but younger stages, they won't. They have a thick skin covering um, an endoskeleton, and they release gametes into the water. So a male individual will release um, sperm cells in the water, and a female individual will release egg cells in the water, and then reproduction will happen in the water. Um, they all have a water vascular system and tube feet. All right, they actually have pretty complex organs and we'll look at um, sea stars a little later on. Now, before we go, I want us to look at a few trends in animal evolution. Um, so some of these pretty straightforward, um, but in the primitive animals, we have either no symmetry or radial symmetry. And then we go to something more complex with bilateral, bilateral symmetry and um, a head. So that's even more evolved. Um, and the primitive organisms don't have sensory organs or sensory apparatus. Uh, the complex organisms do have complex sensory apparatuses. Um, the primitive organisms only have two cell layers, where the complex organisms are going to have three, it's supposed to say cell layers. Um, our endoderm or mesoderm and our ectoderm. These guys, the primitive guys, are going to have no true tissues. Where over here, we're going to have true tissues and real organs. Um, these guys are sessile, they don't move, and these guys are modal, so they can move around. All right, um, so you should be able to fill out all your notes by now. If you need to, go back and watch this video. I know we went through a lot of phyla really fast, um, so you can go back and rewatch it a little if you need to. All right, see you later, animals.